Before we uh, construct the um, or figure out the truth value of a statement based on the, the truth values of its parts, I'm going to give you some practice on that in just a minute. Let me quickly um, follow up on something I didn't mention last time, and that's WFFs. These are called WOOFs, and they're well-formed formulas. So on the left, we see well-formed formulas. They make sense. And on the right, we have some that are not well-formed formulas. They're in red. So it's just like in English, like if I say book, couch, on, er, right? that's not a well-formed sentence. You're not sure if the book is on the couch or the couch is on the book. So I have to say the couch is on the book. That's a well-formed sentence. And the same thing with these symbols. So as you practice, you'll get used to these. Um, the first one's not well-formed over here because the little and, it can't come right after a tilde. Not and, it doesn't make sense. Then we have A or B and C. Well, this is ambiguous because it could be A or B in parentheses and C, like on the left, or it could be A or B and C in parentheses. So, um, yeah, you want to use the parentheses to eliminate the ambiguity and make it a well-formed formula. So, you will you know, if you're a little confused, don't worry too much about that. You'll get practice as we go along. All right, so let's figure out the truth value of the whole based on the truth value of the parts, which is what we mean by truth functional. So on this slide, we're just going to say A, B, and C will always be true, and X, Y, and Z will always be false. So number one, we have A. Remember, that will be true, and X, Y, and Z will be false. So I'm going to write the truth values underneath. So we have true and false. If you remember the dot, the conjunct, it is only true when both are true. So this statement is false. All right? There you go. There's your answer. It's false. <laughs> so again, it's like I'm wearing a blue shirt and I'm clogging. If it's true I'm wearing a blue shirt and false that I'm clogging, then the whole statement is false. The whole is based on the value of its parts. Let's do the next one. So x is false, like you see on the bottom. x, y, and z are always false. And then we have y is false, but we have not y. So that would make that true. Okay. So we have true or false. Remember for the disjunct, the only time it's false is if it's both are false. So the disjunct will be true. Okay, so there's our answer. X or not Y is true. Um, and I suggest you just plug in things for that. Either I'm a Smurf or I'm not a leprechaun. <laughs> okay, and in this case, I'm not a leprechaun. Okay, let's look at number three, B. Okay, B is true. Right? And then we have not Y. And that's not false, which makes it true. Right? So we have if true, then true, and that's true. So number three is true. Okay, and you can circle it if you want. Now we have B if and only if Y. Okay, so we have B is true, as we see in the little thing over here. And y is false. Okay. Now remember the little triple bar, if and only if. It's only true if b and y have the same truth value. But they never will, right? As we can see over here. So this number four is false. Okay. And there's your answer. Let's do number five. We're getting a little more complex here. And you can always start, you know, there's some shortcuts you might see as I go through this, but I'm not going to go through the shortcuts. It's good to go through the long method, too. <laughs> and so, uh, but if you see them, go for them. Okay, so the Y is false. So we have if Y, false, then B, and B is true. When you have a false and then a true, the whole thing is true. So we have a true over here, right? So we have not A or true. We can fill in not A. If A is true, then not A is false. Okay. So we have false or true. And uh, that makes this statement true. Because remember, the wedge is only false if both disjuncts are false. All right. So this whole statement, not A or if Y then B is true. Okay, let's do the last one here. It says, not th if it's not the case that B and C, then if not X, then B. Okay. So 
Let's start within the parentheses. We have B and C. That's true and true, right? True. B is true. C is true. So the conjunct is true. Now, it's not the case that this. So it's not the case that true makes this whole antecedent of this conditional false. Now, a shortcut is, based on knowing that the antecedent is false, I know that this whole statement, this horseshoe here, is going to uh, be true. Because every horseshoe with a false antecedent is true, if you remember the horseshoe table. But let's do it anyway. So let's finish it anyway. X is false. So not false is true. The little tilde is true. And then B is true. So if true, then true is true. So we have if false, then true. And if you remember your horseshoe, your conditional truth table, the only time the horseshoe is false is if you have if true, then false. But we have if false, then true. Therefore, it's true. So number six is true. Okay. All right. So there you have it. You figured out the truth value of the whole statement based on the truth value of the parts. Let's do a more uh, complex one now. Like in your book, let me just, uh, don't save that. Uh, okay, let's pull up this one. Now we're going to say A and B are true, Y and Z are always false, and P and Q are undetermined, so we don't know the truth value of P or Q. So number one, A is true. And then P, we don't know, so I can't write, it's either true or false, right? If you want to write it out, you could, you know, uh, two columns, true and false. So I don't know what this is. Okay? But remember for a disjunct, the main operator here is a wedge, a disjunction. Um, as long as one disjunct is true, then we know the whole statement is true. So we don't even have to know P to know that this is true. It's like saying I'm a human being or I'm over six feet tall. You may not know if I'm over six feet tall, but it doesn't matter because you know I'm a human being. So the whole statement is true. All right, let's do Q and A. So Q is undetermined, and A is true. All right. Now this is interesting. We don't. In order for a conjunct, the dot, to be true, they both have to be true, and we know A is true. Okay. So if Q were true, then the conjunct would be true, but we don't know what Q is. If Q is false, the conjunct would be false. So the answer is we don't know. So you can put undetermined is the answer. We don't know the truth value of this. Okay. Number three, if A then P. Okay, A is true. And P is undetermined. So I don't know the value of that. Okay. Now if it's undetermined, then P could be true in which case this would be true, or could P could be false, in which case this horseshoe would be false, if you know your horseshoe table, right? So I don't know if P is true or false. So again, um, it could be true or false. So again, this is undetermined. That's your answer. Let's do number four. Looks a little more difficult, <coughs> but it's not so hard. Um, so let's start within the parentheses. Z is false. Okay. Now, if false, then you know that whenever the antecedent of a conditional is false, no matter whether Q is true or false, the conditional will be true, if you remember your truth table for the horseshoe. So this is going to be true, right? Because if, it, if false, then true will be true. And if false, then false will also be true. So no matter what Q is, if false, then Q, it's going to be true, right? And that's all I really have to do. This is a shortcut because the main operator is this or, this wedge, and it says blah, 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 or true. And all you need is one true for the wedge to make it true. So there you go. Pretty simple. Now, if you want to practice doing this one, let's do it anyway. Okay. Now, P is undetermined, so P could be true, or it could be false. We don't know. Now, Y is false. Okay. Y is false. 
Okay, so I'll just write it a couple times. So the conditional on the inside would be false if y is false, or it would be true. And then you have not false would be true, and not true would be false. So in short, this is undetermined. 